Hey everyone, I'm Euphonic Videos, and today we are going to be kind of talking about this one video I made, how to play Farming Center 22 on Ubuntu or Ubuntu, however you would like to pronounce it, and kind of on any Linux distro tutorial. Um, we will be answering a comment, and I will also be walking you guys through how to install Ubuntu 22.4 LTS. So, first off, I want to um, talk about this comment that I'll be answering. Uh, I don't pronounce names, so I'll put it up across the screen of who commented it, because um, I am not good with names. So, first off, he says, interesting video. I would like to say I'm glad you find it interesting, and uh, I'm just glad you viewed it. So... I'm going to be breaking this down and I'm going to basically be answering different parts that I view as a question. So, or just uh, a statement and I'll be answering that. So, he says, from a long time Windows user, your, your Ubuntu has nice UI user interface that's responsive. Um, Ubuntu is a lot more lightweight than um, my, most Microsoft operating systems mainly mo almost all Linux distros I can think of is lightweighter than like any Microsoft um, any Microsoft operating systems so yeah and they perform really well so what's great about um, Linux and um, Ubuntu and stuff like that is you can go and take it and throw it on to an uh, old computer and it will run um, and you'll still get updates and stuff that's great because like Windows 7 not supported you don't get updates you can't just go and throw Windows 10 or Windows 11 on your 13 year old computer and see how that goes <laughs> okay uh, second kind of like statement question um i wonder do the mods work fine do i have like a document folder for all game saves on linux like windows um for farming simulator mods work fine editor games mods work fine i have mods for american truck simulator i have mods for farming simulator and they work fine um as you can see on my bar i have farming simulator ranch simulator uh, fishing plant which supports Linux American truck simulator supports Linux um, the hunter classic um, chicken invaders universal I'm currently banded from that but that's not from Linux that's something different um, but these all work um, this one's Windows this one's Windows this one's Windows and this one's also Windows but it also does support Mac um, so where you access the modifier, I think I pointed this out, possibly, and settings, but um, if you open up your folder, what you want to do is, if I remember right, do we go in the games? Yes. All right, so you go into games, you'll have a folder right here under your home. You go in the uh, games, then they should show up here. Um, if you're using, like, for example, Farming Simulator is... Uh, how I installed it exactly through the video so it'll show up here and then you go in here and then you go to drive C so you know you drive letter C and if you go to where is it program files 86 you know you get your farming simulator data here that um, so you could go through and uh, where is it? I think it's in data and you can look through all like the shop vehicles and stuff like that and textures and stuff and then you can go to users uh, Ethan this will vary for your computer if you follow the tutorial um, then you go into documents because you're in like where if you hit Windows key E open up file explorer it would show all this stuff basically kind of it showed on the sidebar, I believe. Um, you go to Documents, and then you'd have the My Games folder, Farming Simulator, 
and then you have all your farming th farming similar stuff so wine and lutris well wine kind of makes like this file directory thing that's like basically your file system uh in windows and it works um like it creates these little things around for your programs around however there can be some problems because um if you need like if you install a windows software and it needs to reach out and grab a directory or location of another windows software that you installed that's a problem because it's not going to find it in here so maybe someone will find a workaround but I have not found a workaround for that um, you can go in here and change all these settings and stuff I have my mods folder um, I think I have another mods folder around here I don't know I recently reinstalled farming simulator because I was doing some goofing around with stuff and just changing stuff up but um, mods do work as you can go back and watch my uh, videos for a good while um, and I was always playing on Linux from then so mods work you have your documents folder just like Windows uh, for your save games hopefully that answered your question very well and hopefully I explained everything well and then later he says and I'm interested if I can run already pre-installed games that I have that work on Windows by unzipping them. Ha ha, don't ask how I got them. Always interested how that stuff works. As far as I'm aware, you should be able to, um, you should be able to, like, um, your pre installed games, you should be able to run those. Um, it's kind of like just installing them I believe is because um with your with farming simulator you have that image right so um, when you double click on it it mounts it down here and uh, then you go in there and you get the exe so what you would do is you could I'm pretty sure if you lutris you could follow that tutorial Come on, open up Lutris. There we go. So you could follow that tutorial, which I tell you to install a Windows game from Media. So you could type in your game, like, whatever you want. You know, you'll have to install the wine and tell it where you want, all that good stuff. Come on, hurry up. Alright, so now you go in here and then you can select your exe file. Um, let's just cancel this. Yes. Another thing you could possibly do is you could, um, if you unzip those mods, or not mods, but game, uh, you could select the folder of wherever they are and it can scan for uh, the games or you could add the add locally installed game. You're going to have to know how everything launch, like uh, your game options, running options, system options, all that stuff. You're going to have to know what you need to do there. So um, probably the first two would be better uh, options. So um, hopefully that um, answers your question. However, you just want to be wise when you're using pre-installed uh, games so um, next one is maybe I'll move to Linux one day to try it uh, I hope you do because I and I also hope a lot more people move there um, because a lot of development companies um, they look at well this community like Mac has you know let's say Let's just come up with a stupid number. 5 million uh, users. So let's say Microsoft has, I don't know, 4 million users. And then here's Ubuntu that has like 1 million users. Um, who do you think they're going to build their software for? 
So hopefully we do get some more people into uh, the community of Linux and Ubuntu. So maybe development companies like Farming Simulator would decide, eh, let's let's do Linux as well. Um, plus it's always great to, you know, get someone off of Microsoft. <laughs> um, then he comes up and says, also, I have NVIDIA GPU. I... Or will I run into problems because I hear NVIDIA is not so good on Linux? I mean, it can run Vulkan games on Windows, no problem. Games like RDR2 on Vulkan worked better on NVIDIA on Windows 10. I believe that's what W10 stands for, maybe. Then, maybe not. Then DX11, believe me or not um i'm just going to answer the nvidia my desktop i run intel cpu and then i run dual amd uh gpus um i have no problem with them so far uh except if i'm not using lutris for farming simulator and at our games i will get a graphics error um my brother has a new nvidia uh, graphics card um, my laptop is also using nvidia gpus it's an older laptop so i can't exactly run all games but i have gotten the hunter classic which is a windows game to run on it and um ranch simulator i have got to run i've had some performance issues not the best when i recommend it for um some laptops that are older but I run a NVIDIA GPU in that, and it works fine. So, hopefully that answered all anyone else's questions. Uh, hopefully, if you did not comment and you had kind of the same questions, hopefully that answered it. Um, now, let's get along with... Um, walking you through the installation of Ubuntu 22.4 LTS. LTS stands for long-term long support, if you did not know. I will link uh, where you can get the installation down in the description, along with a video from my brother's channel, Tay A. He makes a great video that's detailed on how to make a bootable USB of Ubuntu. Um, I believe he uses Ubuntu 18, but it still works because I use it. I will be doing this in a VM as I don't want to wipe out or a computer to install it or um, install it next to a, uh, another OS. So I will be using a uh, virtual machine. I have it right here. It already has Ubuntu on here. I'm going to show you what it looks like when you already have an OS installed. And uh, yeah. Let's get into it. So let's start this up. Let's hit F12. All right, device. I think we just choose this and then we can do C. All right, so this is what the Grub bootloader looks like. Um, so basically you've plugged your bootable media drive into a USB port. You'll have to figure out what your bias well it depends some biases we just do this so it doesn't do the countdown just go into something some biases have the boot uh, menu in it and then some you'll have the your bias and your boot menu so if you don't see like um, by to enter bias is f2 and then uh, boot menu is f 12 or something like that when you boot up your computer then you probably have to enter your bias which is probably something like f2 or your delete key um, you have to figure that out go in there and your boot menu may be in there and uh, you have to boot from that bootable media drive depending on uh, what your bias is if it's UEFI EFI or legacy um, you'll want you'll be best to um, make your bootable media drive on that computer that you will be installing it on so 
once you get to this, you've already got your bootable media drive plugged in. You, you uh, found your boot menu and you've selected where what you want to boot from. So once you boot up into the Grub bootloader, you want to tr uh, select try or install Ubuntu. Depending on how uh, fast your computer is, um, this installation may take longer or slower, and depending on how fast your internet is. Alright, so when you guys get here, you may notice one different thing, if you care. Um, I cut out a s little bit of the soundtrack, or a little bit of the sound of this video right here because they have a boot sound and I don't want to get copyright strikes so I cut that out so you can try it if you want to screw around with it it will be hosted off that bootable media drive however we just want to install it so we're going to click install bundle alright select your keyboard layout my screen does not look very well because I don't know you know the joys of a VM all right, so depending on your computer and depending what you want to do with it, if you want to, you know, if you're just going to be using the basics and uh, you're just going to maybe use it for gaming, you probably could get away with a minimal install. However, if you want all kinds of this stuff, you know, like your media player, um, office software, utilities, and stuff like that, um, go with a normal install. I recommend normal install. If your computer is a little older, you might want to go with a minimal install. I'm going to go with a minimal install just because my resources are limited for my VM and VMs normally don't handle this very well. Okay, under other options, download updates while installing uh, Ubuntu. This will make your installation much longer and we can do this very easily once we get it installed and boot into our new machine's uh, OS. So we're going to disable this. However, if you want to be lazy like me and do what I like to do, underneath this that we just dischecked or unchecked, uh, we have this that's unchecked. Install third-party software for graphics and Wi-Fi hardware and additional media formats select this this will save you some time and possibly save you some problems after all this is not windows and it kind of does get most stuff right um once you're done hit continue all right so this is what it looks like so you have a couple options you have erase uh, Ubuntu 22.4.2 LTS and reinstall. This is what we already had installed on here. You can install uh, what we're installing, Ubuntu 22.4, you know, all that stuff, alongside what's already installed. Now, for you, this may be uh, Windows, whatever, you know, or you can erase and install Ubuntu or Ubuntu, whatever you want to say. Or you can, you know, go in there, format your drive, do all your partitioning yourself, except you're moving over from Windows. So you're probably not very advanced with a computer, not picking or anything. You're just probably not very advanced because um, Windows kind of does some stuff for you. And you may not know a whole bunch about that. You never really get in there. People just set up the Windows and, you know, they do their gaming and stuff or their business there. No knowledge is probably in the web browser and uh, Microsoft 365 or something like that. So, if you would like to be able to dual boot between your pre-installed uh, operating system and the operating system you're installing, go with install alongside. However, if you just you don't care about your documents, by the way, you probably should have backed this up if you don't want to lose any of your stuff. Probably should have mentioned that. Um, but if you don't care about any of your stuff, just do what I do. 
erase disk and install Ubuntu. Install now. All right, select your location. I'm just going to leave this as default. All right, so give it your name because this is going to be your personal name. Now your computer name, we're just going to call this Ethan's VM. All right, pick your username. This is what you'll log in under. And then pick a good password that keeps people out. All right. Added a Q in there. All right. So I recommend that it requires your password to log in and does not log in automatically unless it's like a shared computer and you don't care. All right, hit continue. Now you may have been prompted to um, connect to the internet. I don't have to do that because I am wired. That's what this little thing up here means. This little weird logo. So it already has an internet connection. This is a part that depends on how fast your computer is and your internet connection, how fast and stable. Well, actually it's just copying files. So once it gets into installing and downloading stuff, that's when it's going to depend on your internet. So I'm going to just speed this up to save time in the video. Okay, so once it's downloaded, you're going to hit restart. And uh, it'll let you know when you can remove your uh, media, your bitable media. So what you want to do is you want to unplug it from your computer, hit enter. So for me, um, I go up to devices, optional drive, and I just select this because this is my disk for the virtual machine. Now I can hit enter and it should boot. Alright, so now I'm just going to type in my password. And this is what it'll look like when you first uh, get it here, or get it installed. So I'm just going to go in here and go settings, because I don't like the size of my screen. Um, I'm sure someone is a professional with... Um, virtual box and knows exactly how to make this bigger in this page but I'm just going to go in here and I'm just going to find a good size that's not too big but not too small I think that looks good okay so there are some commands you need to do first thing you do with every install of Ubuntu also I just want to point out um, for my media installations, I use uh, 32 gigabyte uh, jump drives. Look up how much, uh, like what's the minimum of uh, space for a jump drive do I need to, you know, make it a bootable media for that. I'm sure you can find something. Um, my bird is tutorial. Remind later. My bird is 
tutorial is for if you're on like Linux. I think he has a Mac OS one. I'll see if I remember to link that down below. Um, you can do a VM on Windows, um, get it that way, and uh, then you can follow his tutorial unless you run Mac. Um, another thing is, I'm sure you can find a tutorial out there to make a bootable USB drive um, from Windows or Ubuntu. Um, I don't recommend using, um, i trying to figure the name. I'll put it up a crest screen, whatever at your, um, I don't recommend using that. That actually can ruin your USB drives. So anyways, first things what, on fresh install of Ubuntu, what you need to do on most Linux distros, control alt T that will open your terminal. Now, one thing I want to say is sudo stands for super user do. So if you run a command and you see somewhere where it says something like it needs super user permissions or it should be ran with super user, that means it, that command should have been ran with sudo. So we're going to check for updates, sudo apt update, type in our password. All right, we have 125 packages that need to be that are out of date or whatever you want to say. So now we're going to get them and update. So sudo um, apt upgrade. And we want to confirm this. And it's going to be about 363 megabytes. So that's how much space you're going to need need after this operation so if I'm reading this right it's going to install 363 megabytes and then you're going to need 34.8 megabytes after this additionally so type Y to continue um, depending on your internet speed and all that uh, this may vary I would also like to apologize if you hear any people talking. Uh, there's people in surrounding rooms, so please ignore them. Okay, so while it's updating, I may show you a few other things because you don't have to do anything for a little while until this is done. So let's go into settings. All right, next up, may, maybe not like this bar here. Maybe you want it at the bottom or something like that. You can go up to appearance and you can position it to the top right. Oh, sorry, wrong thing. Um, down here, position, screen, bottom. Um, that's right. I'm going to put mine on the bottom. You can also give it a little nice rounded effect like that if you want. Configure the dock's behavior, all kinds of fun stuff make it go dark and the great thing about this is you bundles it's free so you don't need to pay for an activation code like some operating systems to uh you know change your light theme to a dark theme stuff like that um another thing is just maybe you don't know military time you just don't want to uh be like oh what time is this so you can go into date and time and under time format AM and PM and you can do a whole bunch of other stuff like change your background and all kinds of stuff like that probably shouldn't show that I'll probably get a copyright strike on that um a whole bunch of other stuff so once this is done 
I'll show you what to do next. All right, so once you have installed the updates, now what you want to type is you want to type sudo apt auto remove. What this does is going to remove any old existing packages and editor stuff that um, is no longer in use that's just sitting there taking up space for no reason. So let's just run that. All right, so there's no packages that it had to uh, do. Some people say that after doing all this, you wanted to reboot your system to prevent any issues. I recommend doing this. However, I'm not gonna do this. Exit. So, um, if you use the Windows, you may like the buttons on the right side. However, I like them on the left side. Other people like them on the left side. So you can go into, uh, uh, Ubuntu software store the graphical version of it come on open up it's a little slow because I'm on a VM so alright so you can go in here and you can type tweaks and I did not spell it right spell it tweak there we go all right, and install GNOME Tweaks. Much better, all right. And that's where they always should be. So in here you can go through, change stuff, say you don't like your icons, you can change them to something else. Um, all kinds of fun stuff. Um, you can goof off with more of like GNOME extensions and stuff like that. You'll, you can look that stuff up and make it look like Windows if you want. Make it look like Mac. I've done this many times, made uh, you want to look like a Mac. Um, all kinds of stuff. Um, now you can go back to that tutorial um, that the comment was on, and you can watch it and uh, install Wine, Lutris, Farming Simulator, all that fun stuff. Install your editor games, run them through Steam. This will be the conclusion of the video. I hope you found this helpful. Um, I hope my answers to that one comment um, may have answered some of your questions that you were wondering about uh, running Windows games or Farming Simulator on Linux especially you bottle if it did be sure to give it a like so uh, YouTube thinks you like it and will recommend it to other people that look up the same kind of stuff you do also if you'd like to see more videos like this be sure to subscribe and click the bell for all notifications so you don't miss out on another video if you'd like to see more uh, videos about you bottle or terminal tricks let me know down in the comments if you run into any issues or need any help um, feel free to comment down in the comments I'll try to help you um, until then stay safe gaming ain't a crime and uh, I hope you give uh, Linux or Ubuntu both a try hopefully you like them see ya